Here on us we will discuss uh, a set of information systems which are outside the management building. These are some other information systems where they provide varieties of information in our day-to-day -day life. One is GIS, Geographical Information System. So we know about geography. Geography means that's the earth surface. So GIS is giving you information about the earth surface. So then sometimes in the earth surface we have trees, we have rivers, we have roads, we have buildings. So they are built into the surface of the earth. Now if there is a system where they give you information related to the earth surface that is called as GIS in our ICT syllabus. Right. Now uh, the best example for GIS is Google Earth. Most of the people in the today's world, they are using Google Earth. We know that, even you can access that. It gives you satellite images of the ground. Sometimes it gives you the map. So then uh, this is another, uh, this is a type of GIS. Similar to that, we can go for Google Map. That's another package that's giving you the mapping or the road map, river map and uh, many other uh, details related to the uh, geography. And sometimes uh, some other systems are there, ARC GIS. So there are some advanced uh, GIS uh, packages to uh, create the maps and even to analyze those maps, unlike uh, the basic Google Earth, uh, Google Map. So the point is uh, GIS, a software system to provide you details or information about the Earth surface. Then all these uh, GIS packages are providing you uh, information in the form of GUI, graphical user interface. Then people can easily find the surface, find the images based on the uh, graphical objects that they use. Then you go to the next system, uh, KMS Knowledge Management System. So this is another uh, system. This is mostly suitable for uh, enterprises or companies. We will see what it is. This is a system to manage the knowledge. What is knowledge? Sometimes it may be the idea you have. It may be one of your experiences. So they are the knowledges we have. Those knowledges can be shared or can be distributed with the help of KMS. So this is uh, giving you the correct knowledge, the correct, the specific knowledge to the expected person. As an example, there is a company where they use a KMS. Normally I can say that KMS is running in a certain server. So all the knowledge of their employees are saved to the KMS. Say so that there is a newly joined employee. Now he is meeting with a certain problem. As an example, in the bank, uh, the employee meets with a certain problem. Then to overcome that, he needs to ask that problem from one of his seniors. Then he has to walk to the next employee, if he is a senior, he is asking that question and then he may give his experience. But if that is not the correct answer, this person is also getting the knowledge in the wrong way. But under the KMS, it's not the situation when there's an employee who gather a new knowledge. If it is the correct knowledge, he may push that, he may upload that into the KMS. Then the KMS is having that knowledge. Then whenever an another employee needs or meets with the same problem, he may query that, he may inform that to the KMS through the interface they have, through the software they have and this is querying that or this is searching that problem and giving the correct information, correct knowledge to the right person. So this is one such example how the KMS can work. Then uh, the idea behind the KMS is giving the correct expected knowledge to the right person through the ICD based system. This is again accepted into the organization to share the knowledge of the employees uh, easily as well as without having any doubts. If the employee is going to the other employee and ask that question, it takes time and it wastes the time of these people. But now the electronic system gives the uh, knowledge to the correct right person at the right moment. Now we are going to uh, the next system called as CMS, 
content management system. We'll try to uh, get the idea from the topic itself. A system to manage contents. What are contents? Contents are the ones we fed, the ones we need to handle. As an example, uh, in the bank environment, the contents are the um, uh, bank balance, the money deposited. So they are the contents. So they are going to be managed, they can be managed using this sort of system. We will see in deep. Now, these are mostly found in, the CMA systems are mostly found in our web-based environment. In the internet, based on web. And uh, they are already prepared packages. That's the big benefit. They are already prepared. We don't need to make it. Content management. This system is already made for you. I don't want to have any technical knowledge. Why? It's already made. What I can do is, I can only change the contents. I can move the contents. Then uh, it's easy for me. Why? Uh, I don't want to have any deep technical knowledge. This is made package. The package is already made. I can handle the uh, contents. And as a user, what I want to do is, I need to change only the contents. I don't want to worry about the technical concepts. Then I may go for one example called as Drupal. This is one such example for CMS. This is a software or this is a CMS to develop a website. Normally we know that in order to construct a website by a certain person, he need to have a thorough knowledge on HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. Then using the HTML codes, he may develop the page. So it's a big task, complex task in uh, making the website using HTML by a person itself. But if you are going for Drupal, that technical part is done by themselves already. So we can get the Drupal as a package. What we do is, after getting Drupal, this is a web server, we are going to install the Drupal package. Once you install it, it makes the complete website in it. Website is made. So, the home page and uh, other uh, detail pages are made. This is home page. They are made. But regarding the Drupal, do they know what is the title of the web page that we are going to make? Do uh, Drupal know that what are the hyperlinks to be added? They don't know. But what Drupal does is, it may install the package into the computer and create some sample websites using HTML. I don't want to know any HTML tag here. And then what we can do is, under the Drupal package, we can go to the control panel of that package and I can change the content. What is the title of the home page? And how many hyperlinks are to be included? What are the images to be up, uh, added into the web page? So I can just select them and uh, add them into the web page. And what is the next page? What is the title? And what are the images to be inserted? What are the text to be inserted? So I can insert the contents, the images, text, titles onto the uh, web page after constructing it by Drupal. So I don't do any construction work. Uh, this is from the point behind the content management. Why? We manage the content only. We are completely away from the technical working. So then that's what I am summarizing this. So they are mostly found in the web environment and uh, already prepared packages. So user needs to change the contents only. So I need to worry about contents only. And no need to have any deep technical knowledge. Uh, quick in implementing systems. Why? I change the contents only. So then it's leading to quick implementation. And then easy maintenance. I don't want to do any other maintenance, just change the contents uh, through the control panel. And then the examples are Drupal, even Moodle is another such a web-based package. This is mostly supporting the e-learning systems for schools, for universities. This is highly valuable. Uh, this is supporting you to create online quizzes like our Google Classroom. So we don't need to type qu uh, quizzes using the HTML tags. So we can quickly make it. And even we can do some uh, other timing, even assignment submission, uh, giving marks. So all of them are already prepared by the Moodle package. 
we just install them in the server and run them in the uh, school or the college with their uh, with the students right so this is what the content management system is supporting you to manage your contents the next system is ERP enterprise resource planning system this is said to be as a highly complex product it's very complex and also this is very expensive for the organization to purchase so that ERP solutions are not suitable for small scale organizations they are suitable for large scale organizations why it's that complex and it's that expensive why it is that expensive why it is that complex the reason is it is integrating that means combining all the areas of the business this is software to combine all the areas the production area customer service human resource management delivery uh, calling raw materials so all the works of the organization are covered by the erp so it covers the entire enterprise including all the management levels the senior management strategic management middle management operational managers all of them are covered by the erp so that under the erp we have the integrated packages the erp is with the payroll it is with mis dss if we have epos they are also into that and some other online systems all of them are combined into the erp solution you understand why it is complex then erp is a single software package which is covering the full organization so that it has the payroll package mis package dss the the other situation is some organizations they don't use erp that means they don't buy this big software instead what they do is they have a mis product they have the payroll product that's all but even mis is made by one software company payroll is made by another software company when we don't have erp but if this is made by one software company and if this is constructed by some other company what about the compatibility between the systems highly compatible or not no why they are using two different uh, technologies why two different companies are making it but when it comes to erp all of them are made by a single software company then what about the compatibility the data exchanging between these packages payroll data are given to mis so they are highly uh, transparent they are highly efficient why all of them are made by one company so that they are completely compatible so then that's the benefit of having erp all these softwares are nicely integrated they are connecting their data flow everything is fine since erp is covering all those subsections so that's why we know that it's highly expensive and then it's suitable for large scale organizations and uh, in order to construct or to make the erp it takes long time to finish one such erp why it should uh, cover all the areas of the organization next is expert systems es who are experts normally we people humans we rank that we are the experts in the entire world so by that time expert systems these are computer based systems these are replacing the human experts even among the humans we have experts we know that doctor is one they are expert in treating the patients so that if there is a expert system if there is a computer based system to act as a doctor that's called as es so simply the idea is expert systems are replacing the human experts they are acting as human experts so that they should be with the same knowledge where the human expert has if it is an expert system to replace a doctor this system should act as a doctor it has to have the knowledge of the doctor then uh, the manufacturers of this es should learn how a real doctor works the entire knowledge where the doctor has should be fed into the es and this has to have the human sense as well then based on all those features this system is acting as a doctor but according to the modern world can we uh, trust such a system 
No, why? This is completely based on AI. It should act as a human. So, artificial intelligence, intelligence like human should be there. But AI is not 100% accurate in the modern world. So that we don't trust those systems. That's why here we say that expert systems are not 100% accurate at the moment. But in the future, it may be uh, accurate. So some of the expert systems are uh, an expert system to replace a doctor, even a expert system to replace a driver. And we know that now there are systems, there are vehicles where they can drive on their own without a human drive. So they are 98% accurate, but not perfect, not 100%. That's why we say that we have a certain curiosity. Even there are expert systems to replace teachers. So they no need to have a human teacher like we, we people. So the computer or the system will teach the uh, child based on the knowledge level of the child. Sometimes there can be expert uh, or there can be some uh, intelligent children. So quickly we can teach this. But there are students who are weak, then we have to repeat the same thing over and over again. So the same ability is there for the expert system if it is acting as a teacher. So then uh, these expert system, they are systems to replace the human experts. It's, uh, smart systems. Now regarding our smart systems, it is said to be as, now the smart word came in the recent word. Now smart TV, smart systems, there are many things. So we'll see what smart is. If it is smart, uh, the idea in our ICT is, it's completely or fully automated. It's a system where the performance is fully automated, no need to have any human interaction. It may do the job as described. Now, most probably, uh, we go for the auto braking system of a vehicle. We discussed it already. By that time, the braking process is completely automated. Though the human is doing it or not, it's, it's not a matter. So there's a sensor which will detect the uh, obstacles and uh, the system will apply brake. Smart. Fully automated. At the same time, we have smart homes nowadays. They are uh, the complete work or main works of the home are automated. Sometimes under the smart home, there are CCTV cameras set. And the, from the cameras, the system, the smart home will detect who the owner, who, who is coming uh, to the gate. And they will detect, they will identify the owner. If it is the owner, they will open the gate. If it is someone else, they don't open the gate. System will automatically do it. No humans are required when the owner comes and turns on the light. As soon as the owner comes, the system will detect who the owner is. Is that the uh, husband? Is it the wife? Is it children? And turn on lights or air conditioning according to the preference of the member who arrives. So this is done automatically. Smart system. Right? So then, regarding the smart system, there should be uh, they are working on its own, and there should be sensing gadgets. Just like cameras, sensors, they should be there to detect the environment changes. And there should be actuating equipments, motors, sometimes uh, valves. So those should be there. Actuating means the physical movement should be made. The gate thing, there should be a motor to turn on, uh, to open the gate. So sometimes there can be some other valves to uh, emit the fuel, to uh, eject the fuel. It depends on the system. So there should be sensors, there should be actuating uh, equipments and there should be controlling unit. There should be a brain or processor to detect, uh, to decide the decisions and decision making is done. So all of them are going along with the smart systems we have. So nowadays uh, the world is going for the smart things. Why? People are lazy. So we don't need to do anything. System will do it first. That's what the smart systems are.